Hello guys, Dr. Shaquille here, Biology Lecturer at Platinum uh, Business Academy. Uh, brief introduction about myself, uh, I uh, studied in a local government university, did my BBS at the University of Kenya, Faculty of Medicine Rakhawa, currently working for the Provincial Dir Directorate of Health Services, did my internship in Lady Review Hospital for Children in Pediatric Surgery and Obstetrics and Gynecology, right? So, I've been in Platinum for about a year so far, the journey has been wonderful, and I'm doing this for you guys so that I can help convince you that I'm worth your journey to your grades, right? So, today the chapter that we are talking about is circulation in humans, right? And I think the first question that we should all ask ourselves before we proceed with any chapter is why are we studying this? Why is this topic even relevant? What's the whole purpose of this topic? So when it comes to circulation in humans, guys, I think the first question we all need to address before we begin, proceed, is why do humans, why do mammals need a circulatory system? Right? So what is a circulatory system? Basically, heart, which acts as a pump, blood, which acts as a transport medium, and your blood vessels that act as pipes taking this blood around the body. So you can compare this to the water system in your house. Let's say you live in a five-story apartment and you live on the fifth floor. For you to get water from the pipes that receive the water from the water board, right? And for that water to be pumped all the way up to your house on the fifth floor, you need some pressure. That pressure is generated by a pump, a water pump. How is the uh, how is this this water getting to your, your house? It's getting to your house through pipes, right? And once these pipes bring water to your house, you have smaller pipes that take take that divert this water to your kitchen, to your you know to the, your your bedrooms, uh, attached bathroom, your uh, your pantry. In whatever places, bathrooms, your whatever places that require water, smaller pipes, take the water to those places and deliver it through taps. So this is a, there is a similar principle involved when you talk about the human circulatory system. You have a heart, that's the pump that creates pressure that pushes blood, which is like the water going through your pipes, your blood to all the cells in your body, giving them the nutrients they need to survive, to live and grow and you have your blood vessels which act as pipes that take blood away from the heart and bring it back to the heart right okay so that is a brief introduction as to the main components of the human uh, rather the circulatory system in mammals while and then we will skip on to the next question so why do mammals why do humans need a circulatory system why can't they just get what they need from the environment through simple diffusion, right? So if I was to draw an amoeba cell, amoeba being a single cell organism, an amoeba, as you can see in the slide here, it gets its oxygen, water and food from its surroundings and it gets rid of its waste materials like carbon dioxide and urea, also through diffusion, right? Simple diffusion comes in, leaves out, right? What we have to remember is a human being, unlike an amoeba, which is a single cell organism, a human being is composed of millions, billions of cells, right? Stacked up like bricks in a wall, one on top of, the, of each other, millions and billions, right? So from a human being's perspective, right, we have so many cells making up our bodies, right? Simple diffusion, which is enough to make this amoeba live and survive isn't enough for a human being to survive. So, for that reason, you need to have a special system that enables the human being, right, the mammal, to get its oxygen, its nutrients, quickly, efficiently, right, and, you know, <coughs> and also enable those cells, those very cells, to get rid of their waste products quickly and efficiently, right? So the circulatory system ensures that. Because when you have so many cells, simple diffusion would take time, 
right? So if it's a single cell organism like this, substances can enter and leave it on a problem. But we have so many cells stacked on each other like this. If I'm getting nutrients from here, I have to diffuse the nutrients have to, have to diffuse from this cell into this cell to 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 this cell. So it takes time, it's time consuming, it's not very efficient. So instead, nature has given us blood vessels. Blood flows through these blood vessels. And as it flows through, substances diffuse out of it and into it from the surrounding cells. Which is a very beautiful very beautiful mechanism, right? So, now you know why we have to study this and why it is important to have a circulatory system if you're a human being, and the technical term I will use here is multicellular organism. So you have a single cell organism or a unicellular organism, one cell organism, and you have a human being, which is a multicellular organism, right? So what we'll do next is, we're gonna go quickly check out the structure of the heart, right? Now when you talk about the heart, you know, people use the heart, all kinds of uh, you know poems and love stories and songs and you know whatnot. I'm just interested in how it looks, right? When I cut it open, yeah? So forget about the heartbreaks, forget about the romance and you know the pains that you feel and just concentrate on all the structure of the heart that is giving you all that pain. Right, so... Right. So there you go. If you were to take the heart of a human, right, and if you were to cut it in half, so basically, this is the heart, and I cut it in half, it will look like this, right? So I'm going to draw it. I'm going to draw a very rough diagram, which looks like a squash butterfly, based on feedback from my students. But if you know the butterfly pattern, I'll just concentrate on what I'm trying to show you guys, right? So if you take your heart, you have basically four chambers. Right, you have two upper chambers right here and two lower chambers down there. The names that you have to keep in mind are very simple. The two upper chambers, the plural is atria. That's the plural. Singular is atrium. Singular. Right. Over here you have your ventricle, which is singular, and ventricles, which is plural, right? So you have your heart, you cut it open, you see that there are four chambers, two upper, two lower. Upper chambers are known as atria, lower chambers are known as ventricles, right? Now you have to figure out right and left. So it's a basic, very simple principle that you have to follow in biology and even in medicine. When you draw an organ, you have to draw it as if you're drawing the organ in the person in front of you. What does that mean? Basically, when you draw it, you have to draw it as if when you're looking at me, you're looking at me from where you are, which is my right side, this is my right side, my right arm, this is my left arm. So when you label the heart, that's the way you label it, right? You have the right side of the heart right there, you have the left side of the heart right here, right? So line right, left. So you label it based on not your right and left, my right and left, the person in front of you, his right and left. That's the correct way to label it, guys, okay? So having said that, we will now label it precisely. You have your right atrium, your left atrium, your right ventricle, and your left ventricle. Yeah, so this is the precise 
the labeling of the chambers of the heart. Right atrium, left atrium. Right ventricle, left ventricle. Right? This demo will basically show you the sort of teaching techniques I use during my classes. As you can see, this is a PowerPoint presentation, a project that is used. And at the end of every class, I give you guys the PDF version of this presentation for your reference, right? So, it's Dr. Shakil signing off from this video. Looking forward to seeing you guys at my class very soon and help you achieving your goals and hopefully making you guys doctors like myself and maybe help the world, our country, uh, progress forward. Thank you.